Here's the real reason why Michelle Yeoh has risen above everyone else all at once to become the Asian queen of Hollywood. Yeah, I like that pun. Anyway, guys, this is going viral. It's Oscar season. Obviously, Michelle Yeoh, she was a huge star in Asia in the 1980s to 90s to 2000s. But in 2023, Andrew, somehow she has reinvented herself as the queen of Asian American media. So we got to go through some of the viral articles. We got to talk about why that is. So make sure you like, subscribe, and turn your notifications, guys. Everything, everywhere, all at once, Andrew. Up for a bunch of Oscars. Um, oh. Andrew, let's just get into the first article, man. Um, this went viral from Next Shark on Yahoo. She wouldn't listen to people who told her to retire. Do not tell me what to do. <laughs> a lot of people, they were telling me to retire, give up your career, Michelle. And that was right before I got the script for Everything, Everywhere, All at Once. Yeah, I mean, that's very impressive and you got to give it up to her, man. She, uh, All these articles that we're going to be talking about, it's going to just show kind of how like, tough she is like literally like physically and mentally yeah i don't think you guys know like michelle yo and and we grow grew up growing up called her michelle yao she was a star in asia for like decades literally her first like win where she got known was 1983 and then of course super cop was in 1996 um andrew some people were saying man i just hope the oscars would recognize her this march i love to see her win she doesn't need to retire she just needs to get those bunions taken care of apparently <laughs> michelle yo has gotten so famous recently andrew her bunions became famous yeah and honestly michelle yo is really of that like jackie chan era she's almost like i would say jackie chan status yeah. At this stage. Well, she was the female Jackie Chan of Asia or right. the Chinese markets overseas. However, Andrew, this moves into this whole arc that we're going to talk about because in 2023, she like transferred. She went away for a while and then became quickly the queen of the Asian American sphere. Moving on to article number two, Andrew. She's saying that nowadays in 2022, 2021, finally, she started to feel seen by Hollywood because for the longest time, of course, she had money, she had fame, but she she felt like when she came to America, they just knew her as that one James Bond girl and pretty much from nothing else. Yeah, I mean, I would say it's interesting because her recent roles that really blew her up, starting at Shang-Chi, Crazy Rich Asians, and then now everything all at once, she's playing mothers. Yeah. Older also, mothers. I mean, I, I mean Crouching Tiger, Hidden Dragon was her first movie where I was like, Okay, she's definitely playing somebody older with children. Right, right. But but actually playing the actual mom role is something that... Actually, somebody uh, in Hollywood, they kind of talk about this where sometimes you're like too old to play the young, beautiful woman and then you're too young to play a mom mom. And then now right. she can kind of play almost like a young grandmother. I know what you mean. A lot of actresses say that 40 to 60 range is really tough because you don't know what to play because people just don't write those roles in Hollywood. She also said, you know, as you get older, the roles get smaller and it seems like the numbers go up and these things go narrow and then you start getting relegated to the side and side every, more and more. So she <laughs> was really, really happy, obviously about everything, everywhere, all at once. David, your Michelle Yao impression is definitely underrated. What's the next article? She said she won Miss Malaysia to shut up her mom. So I think there's so many things that are related about her story. By the way, Michelle Yo's mom is still alive right now. Wow. And she's Shut still up. looking very young. And uh, we got to get into her background later. But basically, it almost fits into that high expectation Asian's mother or Asian father thing. Because she was like, yeah, you know, I won Miss Malaysia just to shut my mother up. <laughs> she kind of has some stories of like a, I don't want to say rebellious, but it's, it's still somewhat of a Western life. Because where she comes from, there is a lot of Western influence in yeah, Malaysia. She almost grew up somewhat like an Asian American, even though she's 60 like you said, because of the colonial rule of British and French Indochina. Um, moving on, Andrew, she, in 1997, she went viral again because, of course, everything Michelle Yeoh is going viral right now because she was on David Letterman mm. after James Bond came out, yeah. and she said, Jackie is such a chauvinistic pig. Yo, to call out Jackie Chan, now, dude, let me tell you this. I'm sure Jackie Chan in his personal life is a wild dude or was a wild dude. But, however, just to call him out like that is very funny. But I feel like... She was a joke. It was yeah, a, she was joking, but that comment... She was comment, joking and serious at the same time. But that comment nowadays would be taken a lot more seriously than it was, obviously, in 1997. And, and I think that that's why it went viral 25 years later, right? Yeah. Um, also, not only that, she also did say that Jackie Chan saved her life one time 
on the yeah. set of uh, something by catching her from falling but, off but the car. It's too late to cancel Jackie Chan. We, um, we, <laughs> some people were basically saying, like, man, I loved her kung fu movies made in the Asia market in the 1990s. Wing Chun was one of my favorites. Oh, my gosh. Michelle Yo, And I think that that's something, obviously, that a lot of the Asian-American kids don't know, Andrew, is that she was the star of hella hardcore mm. martial arts movies in the 1990s in Bro, Asia. she was doing her own stunts. We can play a clip of her, like, almost dying, like, twice like, things that they would never do nowadays, and honestly, like, no actress at her level would ever do right now. Yeah, I think that she actually drove her own motorcycle on top of a truck. And, of course, back then, they just, like, you know, they didn't have the same liabilities and things like that. You know, Asia movies, specifically Chinese movies back then, they would just break every rule. Yeah. Um, Moving on, Andrew. Uh, she also went viral again because at the Golden Globe she won. They tried to play the music. It was not the pianist playing, but they tried to play, you know, that uh, the classic yeah. soundtrack to go over to be like, hurry up. And she said, hey, shut up. I can beat you up. And that's for real. I can beat you up. And then everybody loved it because everybody does know that she does Kung Fu. Now, obviously, some of the comments were like, oh, oh my gosh, Michelle Yao, you're so small. Why are you just threatening people? Why do you think you could beat everybody up? And it's like, uh, yeah, obviously, like, you know, was she being really seriously? Uh, was she being serious about that? But I just thought that it was just like a lovable moment. Like, everybody wanted yeah. her to say that. Yeah, and obviously she did incense some of the people on the right that were like, hey, man, why is she up there talking about her ethnicity and her age? Like, everything was about that. Like, we all conspired to hold her down. Like, white evil white people, evil white men tried to conspire to hold her down. I didn't like how she, her tone was. So it even turned into, like, a political issue in the comment section of that article. Why don't you shut up? I am not left or right. <laughs> I am just a classy woman from colonial Asia. <laughs> Um, also, Michelle Yeoh went viral again because she said that her own mother, who was still around, by the way, um, basically was saying, why do you look so old in your movies? You look so old and everything all at once. I am used to seeing my Michelle be so pretty. Uh, I think it just goes to show you that Michelle Yo, she has just such a wealth of experience and now it's all coming out on the interviews like she has just so much perspective too and so many stories and she's so good at talking she was a beauty pageant winner miss malaysia 1983 back, back in the day back in the day you know so i'm saying she's been on the stage and she's been known how to carry herself for decades now so and also really i got to through. say that her relationship with her parents is a little bit like second gens that are like 20 or 30 relationship with their parents like we said because actually michelle yo ended up never having kids so right. it's almost like maintain this like and both their parents are still around right now and we got to move on like we said everything about michelle yo whether it's her quotables or her achievements is going viral again in 2023 it's almost like the whole past 60 years is brought back up now but um you know she's the first actress of Asian descent to ever get nominated for Best Actress. That is crazy. I would have thought that there was someone that was at least half. Yeah. Well, actually, there was a woman named Merle Oberlin in 1935 who was like either a quarter or a half Indian and Maori, but she hid it. And I think she just said she was Italian because Bro. she does have like a slight unique look, but she's white passing. Bro, do you think there's any other older actresses from Asia right now looking at Michelle Yo and just being like, could I be next? I maybe, but I mean, they don't have the resume like her because else we'd know. I guess it'd be like. I definitely think she gives hope, but unless you really have been putting in that work for the last 40 years like she has, like yeah. working every day, and, unlikely. And we're also going to talk about how uh, her ability to speak English in multiple languages is also helping. Yeah, I mean, there's articles coming out about her childhood. This one's called The Slow Burning Rise of Michelle Yeoh. How the veteran Hollywood actress went from affluent ballerina and former Miss Malaysia to becoming the first time oscar nominee at age 60 and yeah. there's like photos from her childhood like we said obviously she's from a pretty well-off family in malaysia which was at the time a british colony which allows her to almost feel like an asian american because if you know about growing up in like singapore or malaysia some aspects hong kong andrew it's almost like growing up half in the west even though yeah. you grew up in the East. Yeah, and obviously, like, winning Miss Malaysia, those are kind of, like, westernized systems that she's coming up in. I mean, she was married to... Uh uh, 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 some billionaires in her lifetime. Oh, I mean, Poon. she... She's, it, nah. she's been around like a very like high class group of people. You yeah, know? like we said, but, literally my parents' favorite actresses, like, she was like top three of my parents' favorite actresses back in the 80s. Mm. 
But a lot of people didn't know about who she was in, in America until literally this year. And last but not least, Andrew, she is going viral because she so, sort of represents this Asian American Hollywood that we've never had. You mm. know how like a lot of people are always locked in and they try to shove people like Constance Wu too early into that queen role mm. and it just doesn't work out because now nobody likes Constance. It found yeah. out she's really bratty or really yeah. snotty. Um, but here she is in this photo, Andrew, next to Angela Bassett and next to uh, somebody else. I'm not going to lie. I don't know who that is, mm -hmm. but I'm sure she's pretty big and she's British. And it's like, she's like the Asian queen that looks like it fits in this like united colors of benetton hollywood superstars she carries herself with lots of class and then like look at the comments uh man she, what a fantastic actress and epitome of grace and style wow she's such a badass classy elegant age appropriate but still fashionable all right guys so we went over the viral articles and i think that you know I think you can pretty much say right now it's well-deserved. Everything she has, she's well-deserved. She put her life on the line doing stunts back in Asia. She's She carries herself with class. No real scandals have come out. I mean, she stayed very good-looking. She is a great actress. She's been killing it in her last roles. So I guess we want to get into a little bit more of the details about her background and kind of where she fits culturally in all this. Because I would say, David, it is interesting that she has leapfrogged or risen above all other Asian descent actresses to become this Asian queen of Hollywood. We have never seen something like this before. She is like the, what, Princess Diana. She's kind of the Beyonce of all this. Now, whether or not you think that she represents you because she's mostly of Chinese descent, uh, regardless, she is the Asian queen of Hollywood right now. Like everybody almost has to like bow to her, it feels like. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I don't know if, like, that's the feeling within the Asian American community, but it certainly feels like the first person for the media-type driven crowd. You know, obviously, not everybody is a pop culture maven. You know, a lot of people that are second-gen immigrants in America, they're just concerned with, like, them, yeah. their family, their life around them, maybe in their locale or their city that they're in. But, yeah, if you're super tapped into, like, Variety magazine, Andrew, Michelle Yeoh is the new Asian queen, and I think that a lot of people from, like, colonies in Asia really are the new thing. You know, Br even Bruce Lee was from a very Britishized yeah. Hong Kong. You know, Ronnie is from Malaysia. Right. Andrew, even uh, Uncle Roger leapfrogged all the Asian internet comedians, and he's from <laughs> Malaysia too. These are all like British Indochina or French Indochina. I think we got to talk about this, and uh, we got to talk about how she being from Malaysia specifically or being kind of this westernized but Britishized, not necessarily Americanized, Asian woman just becoming like the top of everything and why that is so appealing and so interesting to people because she has, she doesn't seem like she's actually an Asian American product. She, she is not from America and I don't think she could have been raised in America. You know right. why? But you know what it is? I think a lot of people automatically associate being Western with being American. But if you go internationally, a lot of people actually associate being Western with more being British. Yeah, I think, and this is one of the big aspects amongst everything else that we talked about, which I want to go through real quick. It's like, obviously, her age, the fact that she's still performing at a high level. She's essentially Jackie Chan status now. She's multi-generational. Your parents know her. You know her now. You all appreciate her for different roles. Um, you know that she's a very tough lady. She's put her body on the line. Um, she's very classy. Uh, she's married a lot of rich guys, but she's also been able to humble herself at the same time in many ways. You, you know, know what it kind of reminds me of? And if you guys follow NBA, you guys will get this. It reminds me of when Arvina Sabonis came into the NBA at 30 years old. Arvina Sabonis had been killing everybody internationally for 10 years but due to a dispute because Lithuania was part of the USSR Russia was not allowing him to come to the NBA so we basically had 10 years where he was a beast overseas averaging like 30 and 20 and dominating the Olympics but nobody in America knew what he could do and when he came over he was so well-rounded and I'll tell you this if Arvina Sabonis who's the dad of Demata Sabonis by the way didn't have messed up knees he would have became a Hall of Fame NBA player mm. just based off NBA stats it also reminds me of Luca. you know how Luca was like playing pro in Europe since he was like 12 or 13 years old. And then basically he came to America at like 19, 20 and people were like, whoa, this guy can do all of this. Right. Where was I? And it's like, yeah, you just didn't know because you're the American eyes weren't trained on it. Right, right, right. But I, I, I do think that, uh, Michelle Yeoh is unique in the sense that, you know, she's from a British colony, Malaysia. And I think her Western attitude 
does is not taken after an American, actually. She's taking after, like, British people. Yeah, because, so, and, and I feel like British people, because she grew up there for a number of years, I believe uh, 15 to 22, like, people identify with her. Yeah, and I also want to say, like, you know, when you see, like, uh, the Uncle Rogers or everybody else that's from Malaysia or even Indonesia, when you're talking about Rich Brian, you know, these... Nikki, inter- right? Yeah, these international kids who kind of are able, that are super clever, they, they know multiple languages, they're kind of becoming the new... Asian stars, minus the K-pop stuff. Aside from the K-pop stuff, these are the other Asian stars yeah, that it's are It's almost like up. the Chinese stars are all coming from French or British Indochina, yeah. and then the other side of the stars are all just coming from Korea. Yeah, because I think that there maybe is like, growing up in America, and I'll put it pretty bluntly, sometimes you're raised up and you're viewed as like a second-rate version of a white or black American. Right, you're like, saying depending on how you uh, organically or made a concerted effort to shape your identity yeah, after one of the two heritage groups. Yeah, exactly. You essentially become some version of them, or that's how you're viewed at least. While these people coming from Asia, but a westernized, Britishized country in Asia, it's almost like something totally different. And it's something that's classy, it's interesting, they have an outside perspective, they're secure in their identity, they know that they're Asian, they know where they're from. Also, they're not from, for example, like mainland China, which is very controversial right now, and probably will be somewhat controversial for the next couple decades. Like, they are from this, like, part of Asia that is, like, not... I think I think it's they, had multi-generational yeah. contact with the West, and... uh They've already sort of decided how much they want to let in and how much traditional culture they want to maintain. I mean, they're they're sort of like settled into their mix. I'll be honest, guys. She's more like probably as a person in a good and in a in both good and bad ways, more like the mother that she played in Crazy Rich Asians than she is the mother that she played in everything, everywhere, all at once. Right, which was more of a, I guess, an Asian American struggle, right? Right. Uh, but I mean, all aside, guys, I think we can all agree. Michelle Yeoh deserves it. Yeah, and she, I, she deserves her flowers. Bro, if you see the work that she put in uh, in the past decades, it, it's incredible. So I think I mean, it's crazy to see somebody that I remember hearing about like since I was almost like a baby, and then it kind of leaves it out of your mind for like 20, yeah. 30 years, or maybe like realistically 20 years, and then it comes all the way back in at a 10 out of 10 level. And, and you know what's another point, that reason why that she couldn't be from the Western world fully, like she couldn't be from America, just because she wouldn't have got that many reps in America. She made so many movies and got to build her status over there because in Asia, the stars are Asian. Versus over here, she might have, even if she won a couple pageants at a young age, she might have got shelved or shoved into these certain roles that were uh, uh, not like A-level roles, not even B-level roles. Yeah. Right? She could have got shoved into she some She definitely C-level would not roles. have been able to maintain like the prestige lane. She would have had to play in some National Lampoon or yeah. like, you know, like fratty sort of like low-end things. Because obviously, if you guys understand about demographics in America, the low-end in America actually drives a lot of consumption and has a lot more money than the low-end in like another country because America's just rich all around. But yeah, I mean, hey, man, shout out to Michelle, yo. There's so many takeaways to get into this if you guys really understand like demographics and like market pools and stuff like that. But, you know, we'll save those things for another day. Anyway, I hope Michelle Yo, I hope Ki Hui Kwan wins a bunch of Oscars. They deserve it. They've been putting in work, sharpening their skills outside of the limelight. Mm. And like we said, it's just like that our Venus Sabonis thing. They're, they've been working. All right. But just outside of the eyeballs. Yo, shout out to Michelle Yo, the Arvinus Sabonis. I mean, honestly, Even, but, but she's Arvinus beyond Arvinus Sabonis. With, with more fresher needs, she's yeah. like what Luca is going to end up yeah. being, probably. <laughs> all right, so, all right, everybody, thank you so much for watching. Let us know in the comments down below what you think. Uh, what do you think about, uh, could she have been an Asian American or obviously are there certain things in growing up as an American that like kind of kind of might like hinder your growth or hinder the type of reputation, uh, repetitions that you get out here so i don't know let us know what you guys think about this video if you found it interesting anyways this was our breakdown about the asian queen michelle yo all right you guys let us know in the comment section below until next time with the hot pot boys we out peace, peace.